This is Miriam Raftery with the East County Magazine Show on KNSJ 89.1 FM Descanso. And my very special guest today is Rick Hall, who is the is president yes. of the El Cajon Historical Society. And we're delighted to have him with us here on the show to share some interesting information about El Cajon's colorful history. Rick, I hear that you are a descendant yourself of one of the prominent pioneering families locally. Can you share a little bit of that history? Sure. Um, our family arrived in the valley in 1886, and uh, when there was about 12 families in the valley. So uh, wow. we've seen some changes since then, obviously. I could imagine. Uh, di what did your family do here locally? They basically started off as an agriculture, which El Cajon was big in at that time. Mm -hmm. um, he, my, my great great grandfather, had a forty acre farm over off there, over near where Granite Hills High School is now. And I think he actually expanded that a little bit later on, but I think he did uh, some fruit trees, etc. And uh, uh, grapes were really big in the valley at that time, so everybody kind of grew some grapes for the raisins, of course, because it no, was uh, the raisin no, capital of California here. Right, exactly. At uh, one point in 18, uh, see if I can remember my docent training here, 1893, uh, I think it was, the our raisins were sent to the Chicago. Uh, World's Fair and they won first place for their quality over the whole nation. So we we had some wow. very top quality agriculture in the valley. Yeah, it's interesting that, that the wine region, the grape growing is coming back, but for a different reason these days in some parts of East County. So yes. tell us a little bit about the El Cajon Historical Society. When was it founded? It was founded in 1973. I've been volunteering with the Historical Society for a little over 35 years. Mm -hmm. This will be my fifth time next year as president, um, and we have a very, very good board. Um, we're all very concerned about what's coming up as far as our next year, the deficit that we're facing. This will be the first time in our 48 years that we've had a deficit budget. Now, is that because of COVID-19 and the fact yes. that nonprofits obviously weren't able to hold events, a lot of the donors... I know with yes. all nonprofits, uh, we're facing issues with that. That is correct. Um, I know our situation isn't unique, and I certainly understand that there are uh, very worthy causes that uh, need donated funds right now. It's just for us that we've always been able to uh, take care of ourselves, and mm -hmm. uh, this is a little bit of a unique situation. Well, it's important to keep history alive in East County. These stories, you know, if they're not recorded, not written down, uh, people forget the past. And of course, we could all learn from the past for the future. Where can people donate or for that matter, volunteer and get involved if they want to help the El Cajon Historical Society? Well, we, our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 1973, El Cajon 92021. Um, so that is one place that they could send donations. We are a 501c3 corporation, so um, the funds that are donated should be um, deductible. Yeah. Is there a website? Yes, there is. Uh, if um, You could go to elkhornhistory.org. That would be there. And I believe in there is the email address. So there's a way to contact us that way. The website is now back up and running. It was down for a while during COVID, but uh, we're back up and going now. Well, I'm glad to hear it's back up. You certainly have a lot of really interesting information up there. Can you share a little bit about the museum that the, the Historical Society operates and what people can see if they, where it is and what it's called and where people can uh, find it? Sure. It's at 280 North Magnolia on the corner of Park and Magnolia. We are currently uh, in a kind of recovery right now, but we are open the third Saturday, Saturday of each month from 11 to two. The museum actually- uh, And it's called the, the Knox House Museum, K-N-O-X. Correct. It started off actually as a hotel. Um, Mr. Amaziah Knox came to Elkhorn Valley in 1869 
And uh, soon after he got here, I think most people would recognize that gold was discovered up in Julian in 1870. And what Mr. Knox was starting to notice as people were traveling, of course, from San Diego to and back and forth to get supplies mm -hmm. and stopping really right near the corner of Maine and Magnolia, what is now Maine and Magnolia, it wasn't anything then, and just camping out there. So apparently he had the idea that a hotel might be a good thing. Soon yeah. after the hotel, um, you know, a lady came from back east with her husband who had consumption, which is tuberculosis, I guess. Yes. And he unfortunately did not uh, survive. And so one thing led to another, Mr. Knox and, and Ella Birdsey became married. And then the hotel became actually the Knox house. They stayed in the hotel business by putting a 424 room annex onto the side of the house. Interesting. So, that's a brief history. It also became the first post office in Alcohol, too. So. You mentioned uh, gold mines. A lot of people don't know there actually was a gold mine in Alcohol at one time. Isn't that correct? That is correct. Uh, there was some information about it being along the hill alongside of uh, Chase, up above Chase along there. And there was a, supposedly another one that it did pr pretty well over near Grossmont Summit. Yeah, all these little fascinating bits of trivia. Now, the city has been a a city officially for a little over a hundred years. I believe they had their centennial in 2013. So a city uh, was declared in uh, 1913. Tell us a little bit of the colorful history of Alcajon's past, maybe a couple of good anecdotes to share that people can learn if they come to your site or visit the museum. Well, one thing on our site is a tour of the museum. So if you're not comfortable in and yet venturing out with the pandemic, we have a virtual tour of the museum on the website. Oh, that's nice. There are so some, also some stories that some of the early pioneers have written that we've posted on there. So we do have that. Um, some of the things that uh, I think that's happened th through the years have been sort of interesting. I, I know um, that my great grandfather at one point uh he his uh he actually got into the hardware and building materials business when he went up hmm. by where the trolley is nowadays to buy some lumber and ended up with the whole lumber yard and then he moved it down at 230 east main street and one of the things that he found there was a very very good well and he built a large uh, storage tank for it and ended up running pipes down Main Street to some of the other businesses. So that was kind of a early um, water district, I guess, so to speak, which it wasn't really wasn't, but it became a, a place to supply water to some of the other businesses. Very so. interesting. I remember when I was covering the centennial celebration, a fascinating fact that stuck with me was that when they became a city, their, one of their first official acts was to outlaw horse racing down Main Street and ban saloons. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably certainly, certainly true. <laughs> well, times have certainly changed a lot. And I, I think it's important to note, too, that history is ongoing. And is the Historical Society doing any kind of outreach to capture or record living history, you know, some of the things that are not ancient, but that are still occurring now. We have done some of that in the past. Um, one thing we're very interested in at this point is to see if we can reach out. And we have tried a little bit to reach out to the uh, Chaldean community to oh. get some, um, some of their history. How did they, how did they choose to come to alcohol and how did the, some of the things they experienced in coming here. And so we, we are very interested in learning more about that because certainly they're going to be a part of our, are and will be a part of our history going forward. So. Yes, and actually there are really immigrants from around the world coming to alcohol now. The most recent are the Afghan refugees. I just interviewed one of them yesterday. Yes. And uh, people from Syria who've come from the war there, some people from Africa who came here as immigrants or refugees, and I'm sure many other places, Mexico, certainly. So you're right, it, it, it is an interesting history that evolves in the early days it was all the pioneers from back east and some Spanish history and, um, but it's ongoing. And I think it's important for a historical society to 
continue to be around to record this history so that it won't be lost. So sure. t- tell us a little bit more about um, you know, fundraising efforts and how much are you hoping to, to raise? Well, we work on a very austere budget. Um, we, most people would uh, probably be surprised that <laughs> we are able to survive on, on what we're surviving on. Yeah. Um, right now, we are probably about uh, one to three thousand dollars short of breaking mm-hmm. even, and mm-hmm. so we were so, hoping to raise something like that. Yeah, so one big donor could do it, or a lot of little donations. Do you do sustaining donations? Can people buy memberships, or do you have events or any other ways that people can help out? Yes, absolutely. Our memberships really never actually, and this is done intentionally. Is they never really? There's never we never bring in enough to to meet our budget uh, we've always as a board made the decision to keep our memberships very low so more people mm-hmm. could participate in, oh, in nice. the saving of the, the community or in the interest of the community so that's we always have to have some sort of a special event or something to sort of make up the shortfall well that yeah. wasn't possible last year because there was nobody having any special events. So. Right. I, I know our nonprofit went a year and a half with none and all of them that I spoke with have been struggling because of that. Do you have that said, do you have any on the horizon? Well, one thing we're hoping to explore is crowdfunding. Uh, we don't know being historical. We don't know too much about crowdfunding, but we're yeah. going to try to learn. Uh, another thing we hope might happen is that some of our members might help underwrite some of our expenditures so maybe Mm -hmm. somebody could pay for our telephone expenses or something to that effect well that's a great idea people love to know how their donation is being spent to target it specifically that is always a good idea i think and i'd like to i'd just like to say in regards to that we as a board take the funds that are entrusted to us very seriously and one of our driving principles is to be good stewards of those funds. So I don't think very important. I don't, I don't want anybody to feel that those would go to waste if they donated them. So no, it's always nice to have those those general fund donations that you can spend wisely and as you see fit. Have you ever thought about doing any events sort of like what Old Town does, where they bring history to life with reenactors or people reading scripts or contests to encourage people to send you their historical stories? Um, you know, maybe public readings, dramatic readings of some, to recreate and build interest in El Cajon history. Um, that is very interesting. And, and I think right now, most everything's on the table. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did have a third grade essay contest for about 30 years that has re- had recently gone by the wayside. Those would be interesting to try to re- revitalize too. Um, one of the things that was in conjunction with that was having third grade tours, uh, school district tours come to the Knox house. That of course has, wasn't uh, possible with the pandemic. So um, yeah. that's something we're looking at again to see the, uh, what the logistics of that might be because the Knox house is rather small and to bring in 35 students into a small area like that is something that we, have to figure out how that's going to work. Yeah, difficult. Maybe you know, maybe do some outside presentations or something until we get through the COVID here completely. Correct, correct. We all hope we'll end one of these days. Um, again, l- listeners, you can go to the El Cajon Historical Society website, which is elcajonhistory.org to learn more or donate. Or uh, I-, I imagine like all nonprofits, you probably also need volunteers. Can you tell us about those opportunities? Sure, we can always uh, definitely use volunteers. Um, we it would be mostly probably at this point for uh, dosing, uh, telling telling the history of El Cajon. Yeah. and we can and we have a docent handbook that someone could read to be brush up on that and maybe uh, kind of mirror. Uh, we only have two or three docents right now, but we could mirror. They could mirror some of the docents to kind of learn more as the tours are being given. So, very good, Rick. What else would you like our our listeners and on the website now? I have to say viewers as well, since we're doing Zoom podcasts. Also, um, 
what else would you like the audience to know out there about the El Cajon Historical Society that we haven't already discussed? Well, I, I think that uh, it's important for the community to realize there is an El Cajon Historical Society for one. Yeah. Um, we often get people come in and into the Knox house and say, gee, I, I really didn't know you were here or I've been trying to get in here for a long time. And uh, so just really to let your viewers know that we've been, we're here and we've been here for 48 years. We're thankful to still be here because certainly we've watched many businesses that didn't survive the pandemic. So we're very thankful to still be in existence and we are going to work very hard next year to remain that way. Very good. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today on the East County Magazine radio show and our podcast, Reese County Magazine, KNSJ 89.1 FM, Descanso.